I'm David Canzeri. I'm the Director of Interventional Cardiology and the Chief of the Piedmont Heart Institute in Atlanta, Georgia in the United States. Today, the Spiral HTN Renal Denervation Program represents the most robust uh, and with depth of, of follow-up program for renal denervation therapy that exists. And specifically, in, over, in thousands of patients treated, we have now more than 12,000 patient years of follow-up with this specific technology. Aside from that too, there is independent study that has demonstrated the durable, long-lasting reductions in blood pressure with this modality existing through 10 years of follow-up, which is quite remarkable. Scientifically, there's been some question as to whether these nerves may regenerate, and through preclinical studies, we've identified that that is not the case, and at least through clinical follow-up, there seems to be a durable, sustained reduction in blood pressure over long-term follow-up. Specific to the spiral program, we now have available data at least through three years of follow-up, demonstrating a persistent, sustained reduction in blood pressure in patients treated with renal denervation therapy that cannot be explained by an escalation in medication dose or number or class. And specifically through three years, for example, in the spiral HTN on meds pilot study, we see the complementarity of renal denervation therapy with medications with greater sustained reductions in blood pressure over this long-term period compared with individuals who are treated with medications alone and even despite increasing their medication dose and or number. And this is highlighted, for example, in the fact that through three years in the spiral program, roughly 85% of patients achieved a systolic blood pressure of less than 140 compared with less than half that in patients in the sham control group. In addition to the spiral HTN on med pilot study as a randomized trial, the Global Simplicity Registry representing patients considered more representative of real-world practice and approaching nearly 3,000 patients has follow-up through three years and shows again sustained durable reductions in blood pressure. If anything, like the randomized trial, these reductions are amplified over long-term follow-up, but once again, they're not explicable by an escalation in drug dose and or number. So it, again, it highlights the durability of effectiveness or efficacy with blood pressure lowering with renal denervation therapy. Durability of efficacy, durability of blood pressure reduction is especially meaningful to patients because when we survey patients in patient preference studies, one very important factor, of course, would be the extent of blood pressure lowering to an individual in deciding whether to take more medicines or to undergo a procedure like renal denervation. But the second most important feature for them is the durability of the, of the benefit. And we can demonstrate that now through, the, through this program of sustained reductions over several years now of follow-up. Aside from thinking about durability of effectiveness of blood pressure lowering, we also need to importantly think about the durability of safety with this procedure. To date, fortunately, the procedure itself of renal denervation has proved exceptionally safe um, with no major adverse events attributable to the device therapy during the procedure itself. But further, over a long-term follow-up, there are considerations of trauma or injury to the renal arteries for renal artery stenosis, which thankfully is almost case reportable with dedicated following and imaging across these different studies. But the second issue is, uh, is looking at kidney function, renal function. We know hypertension is not only the leading cause of, of, of death and disability, but part of that disability is an end-stage renal disease and a decline in kidney function which if anything with renal denervation and by improving blood pressure, we could mitigate that annualized decline in kidney function that's so typical of patients with uncontrolled hypertension. And once again, here through long-term follow-up after renal denervation, we see a stability in kidney function or at least no exceptional decline in kidney function that would be attributable to, to the procedure itself. Again, highlighting the long-term safety, uh, or I should say the long-term durability of both effectiveness, blood pressure lowering, and safety as well. Uh, coincident with a reduction in blood pressure after renal denervation therapy is for some individuals the opportunity to reduce medication burden. We recognize that the increasing number of medications is an independent predictor of non-adherence to antihypertensive medications. In most instances, renal denervation therapy should be considered complementary to pharmaceutical medicines. Both work effectively well at lowering blood pressure and can be additive to one another in achieving even greater reductions, especially for patients with uncontrolled hypertension despite prescription of medications. 
But for some individuals with an improvement in blood pressure, this also permits a reduction in either the number, the dose, or the class of medicines, which for many individuals are associated with significant side effects. And that in itself is a clinically meaningful achievement um, for many patients, especially when we consider this, this prevalence of non-adherence to medications with many studies estimating at least 30% of individuals may not be taking all or some of their antihypertensive medications. One very important observation that we've observed in the renal denervation program is that with durability or of effectiveness, that is sustained reductions in blood pressure over a longer time periods, patients spend a greater time in therapeutic range. And therapeutic range is an index or a surrogate for improved blood pressure control, of course, over long-term follow-up that may be associated with improved outcomes. That is avoidance of heart failure, of myocardial infarction, of stroke, and of course, mortality itself. Through the Global Simplicity Registry, as an example, with renal denervation therapy, patients can achieve a greater sustained time in therapeutic range. And this has been associated with statistically significant reductions, the greater time spent in target range, with reductions in mortality, in heart attack, and in stroke as well. There is no reason to believe that the blood pressure lowering effect with renal denervation therapy would not translate into the same improvements in clinical outcomes for patients as drug therapy. And as we learn more about renal denervation therapy and the durability of it, 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 it's expected to translate into clinically meaningful improvements. If we think that a 10 millimeter reduction in systolic blood pressure is associated with 25% approximate reductions in stroke and heart attack and 10 to 15% reductions in mortality, this is a, a, a benefit that could be expected with renal denervation therapy as well.